Hi guys, this video is a takeoff from my previous video where I made a microscope using the designs of Anton Ward Levan Hawk, the father of microbiology himself. It required me to make glass beads of 1 mm in diameter which I made myself by melting glass. It was a fantastic educational DIY video and if you have not seen it already, please do check it out from the description below. It turned out to be a lot better than the usual DIY microscopes that are made with laser pointer lenses. But to view through it and to get a correct focus was a bit tedious as well as a bit frustrating. So I sought out to make two things. One, to make it user friendly and two, I wanted to see if I could get better magnification. In this video, I am going to show you how exactly I did that. If you are new to my channel, I am Josh and this is my DIY channel video Epo. and in this channel you will find videos on various genres and there will be something that you might definitely like. Please do subscribe and encourage me to keep up this passion of making videos and sharing with the world. I will be back right after the intro. I will have to do a little bit of more talking in this video, it is essential, so you will have to bear with me and my English. So let me run you through the process of how I made the Leeuwenhoek microscope. I acquired some glass pieces, pre-cut to 10mm by 300mm and heated them on a high flame with a butane torch. As the glass began to melt, the two ends were pulled apart, leaving two glass whiskers on either side. By reintroducing these whiskers back into the flame, these curl up to become tiny glass bead. Once cooled down and broken away from the main glass thread, they resemble a tiny spherical glass lollipop. The bead needs to be round and the diameter has to be around 1mm for best results. By making a pinhole on the cardboard and placing this glass bead, the microscope is ready to be used. Here is the difficult part. The microscope is held vertically and so is the specimen against the source of light and the viewing posture is not very comfortable. I wouldn't complain of this posture if this were to be a telescope, but viewing something microscopic, you definitely need something on a table. My primary quest was to turn this like the modern microscopes which are placed on the table. Also by placing something like this on the table, it reduces the vibration caused by my own hands. The second important quest was, will I be able to increase the magnification of this tiny bead lens of 1mm in diameter? Well, the answer to that question would have been a lot easier if only I had paid attention to my optics class. If you are like me, don't worry, it is time for some practicals. Can we magnify an image using a magnifying lens which has just been magnified by another magnifying lens? Let me just hold one magnifying lens behind the other and try to enlarge or magnify the image created or made by the previous or the first magnifying lens. And it seems it's possible. So if I try to combine the ball lens that I made and another magnifying lens from a laser pointer, I might not have to hold the microscope so closer to my eyes. So I went into the toy trash collection and I found a whole bunch of lenses. Here is the set of lens I am going to use. Glass beads that I made myself, a laser pointer lens, two biconvex lens that I salvaged from a toy projector. How to align these? Here comes the PVC pipes, half inch, three quarter inch and one inch plumbing pipes. They fit on each other snugly. Note that you will be needing less than 2 inches and that is possibly the size of the microscope itself. If the fit is not snug, wrapping it up with some tape gets us to the goal. First layer of the tube will have the glass bead and the second one will have another lens. And if required, I might add the third lens. Similar functionality can be achieved by using syringe of varying incremental size. It could be made by removing the handle and inserting the smaller one inside the larger syringe. Making old school paper rolls could also help. By rolling one layer on a PVC pipe or anything cylindrical, it can be taped and the process can be repeated over it. Here it looks flimsy because it's only a demo. You can always glue the sides to make it stronger. We also need a proper light source and I used a headlamp. A black chart with a small hole is inserted by unscrewing the top lid. The smaller piece here is my high tech solution to vary the intensity of light coming through the torch. Last time I used a OHP sheet instead of a glass light which was a bit wobbly. Having a glass light gives a bit of stability and visibility and the cover piece makes the surface flat. This makes focusing a lot easier. Staining the specimen is important. Although iodine is used for this purpose, I am using food coloring. A drop of this color can be placed on the specimen and the cover slip is placed on top. Make sure there are no air bubbles trapped between the slide and the cover slip and remove the excess liquid with blotting paper or cotton. With these materials already set up, it's time to make the microscope itself. 
I am going to measure the diameter of the PVC pipe and divide the measurement by half. This would give us the radius and using a circle cutter, I can cut small circles on a plastic sheet. I am not tracing the shape because once we place the lens, they all have to be concentric. Suitable size hole is made with a drill bit once the piece is cut. Now drilling leaves a lot of burrs. This needs to be removed and clean the workpiece as much as possible. Note the thickness of the plastic sheet is much lesser compared to the cardboard I used in my earlier attempt. Imagine the orange part to be the light source and the light travels in straight lines. In our case, all of it comes from a microscopic point through a lens of 1mm in diameter. Being precise is super important and I am counting on it. The PVC pipes are cut to length. Measurements are in the description if you need, but this is very much based on the lens that I have at the moment. To cover the top part and make the lens holder, again, I just improvised with whatever I have apart from the plastic sheets I cut washers of various inner and outer diameter. The base is made with a spare 2x4 wood which is good and stable support for this project. The headlamp was a bit bulky and I decided to make a simple LED light. The black box you see here is a telephone connector with all its internal removed and it houses a 9V battery and an LED. Of course there's a switch for it. For mounting the lens to the handle, I made a groove on the PVC. By sanding the interior of a T connector, it could now freely slide over the PVC. By making a hole in the center and adding a wing nut, the height can be adjusted. This is a good choice, but I thought of another plan. By using a long threaded rod and putting some springs there, I could easily adjust the height and get precise focus. But I found another easier solution. I found these tube clamps which had a pre-drilled hole in the center. It is almost like a quick release function. All you have to do is open the latch, slide it up and down and lock it at the desired position and it stays that way. The lens holder is nothing but an elbow connector with some parts removed. Here are the set of lens I made. This one here is simply a laser pointer lens which also shows something microscopic. The second one again is a laser pointer lens, nothing fancy here as well. By doing a little bit of a trial and error, I found out that the laser pointer lens can actually be used to see something microscopic. With these laser pointer lenses, I was able to see the cells in the onion skin. But it really depends on the kind of laser pointer you are ripping apart for its lens. For example, this lens here did not have a housing and this one did have a housing and working with these was working with this one was a lot easier. And the magnification of this one is much larger compared to this one. If we combine these two lenses, with a ball lens that I made, the image is much larger. The third one is a combination of a glass bead and a laser pointer lens, which has even better magnification. The fourth one is a combination of a glass bead and a toy projector lens. Again, this has much larger magnification. These are the only four combinations I could get right. To get all of these upright and standing, a small aluminum rod was cut to length. At this point, I removed the excess from the lens holder and sanded it as well. Two holes were made on the rod and one side bent to 90 degrees. Using some small screws, everything was fixed in place. With the tube clamp sliding up and down on the lens holder with a firm hold, precise focus can be made now. Then a hole was made on the base and the PVC pipe was inserted in there. With this, we have a functioning microscope. Considering most of its parts are salvaged, this is one of the low cost but really educational project. However, one upgrade could be made which is adding a variable resistor in the light source to adjust its intensity. But I just added some papers in there. Guys, unfortunately, I will not be able to show you what I see through the microscope on the screen because the mobile phone does not do a good job of capturing the images through this microscope and that may be because of the shape of the microscope itself. I needed some proof to show you that this microscope does work. This is the best footage I could get, but let me tell you that the view is much better directly. This is quite an interesting project if you want to try it out because I've never seen any video that tells you how to combine two different lenses to make a microscope. 
But if you're going to do that, I would suggest you keep some pills or some coffee ready because I did get a headache trying to get the specimen in focus. It took me a lot of time. Like I told you earlier, this could have been a lot easier if only I had paid attention to my optics class. But there is something that you can pay attention to. Please pay attention to the subscribe icon on the screen and click on it. And if you like this video, please do share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel with your Epo. I'll be back with another video very soon. Until then, bye.